Ariel Helwani in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, site of UFC 161 alongside Rosie Sexton, who meets Alexis Davis this Saturday night live on pay-per-view. And Rosie, it's nice to meet you. Thank you very much for the time. What an interesting story. I feel like you are getting more attention, more press going into this fight than any fighter on this card, including Dan Henderson and Rashad Evans. What do you think of that? Uh, it's been absolutely crazy, to be honest. I think the last couple of weeks of just, uh, it's, um, I say the, the the amount of um, attention we've had from mainstream media as well as the MMA media has been has been incredible. Uh, so it's kind of blown me away a little bit. I wasn't I wasn't quite ready for that. Why do you think you're getting so much attention? I think people find it an interesting story. I think because I'm about as far away from your stereotypical fighter as you could probably get uh, and I think because of that pe people are interested by it you know people people like the the incongruity of it so for those that may not be familiar with Rosie Sexton the, the casual fan run down the resume I called you before we started filming this the smartest fighter in the UFC I, I think that's a huge compliment based on your resume or your CV they call it CV in England right yeah. That's right. as in Canada as well. Why are you such an interesting story for, for the press? Um, I think I've, I've got um, a first class maths degree from Cambridge, a PhD in theoretical computer science, and I also studied as an osteopath. So I'm a, I'm a practicing osteopath in the UK, um, aside from being a fighter. And your mother as well? Yes, I've got- Most I've got, importantly. I've got an eight year old son. Yeah. What does your son think of your profession? He's at the age at the moment where he thinks it's really cool what his mum does and he loves telling everyone that his mum's a cage fighter so we have to have that little talk about we prefer not to use that word um, but he still does it. Um, so I have some interesting conversations with his teachers and the other parents at his school. Um, he's, he's just um, got to the age now where he started saying oh, I want to come and watch you fight. And I'm saying not quite yet, not quite ready for that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, he, he, he's been around the sport all his life so it's something that he takes in his stride really. Will he be watching on Saturday night? He's not going to watch it live, um, but he'll probably watch it after the event. What's interesting about this fight and, and your, 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 your spot on the card was that, correct me if I'm wrong, it sounded like you were done with the sport. You were supposed to fight in Cage Warriors last year um, against Sheila Gaff, and then she pulled out after Vada got involved. Is that a coincidence? We don't know, but you insinuated that there might have been a coincidence there, and you said, you know, until the sport gets cleaned up, I'm done with it. So why are you back? Essentially, um, there was an opportunity to fight in the UFC and I couldn't turn it down. I mean, it's something that I've, I've dreamt of ever since I got involved in the sport. Um, I never thought I'd, I'd get that chance. So when it came along, I thought, oh, I'm going to have to give this my, my absolute best shot. So if you didn't get that call, you'd be done? I didn't say that. You know, I, I, never, I deliberately never used the R word. Um, but uh, what I said was, I wasn't really looking to... For another fight unless something came along that really made sense and obviously this is it you know this this was the thing that came along that really made sense how do you turn it off and on we were talking with rashad evans about this that once a fighter starts to flirt with the idea of retirement they usually don't seem like they're themselves when they fight again for the rest of their career so you had that mindset that you might have been done and now you're back ready to go 100 miles an hour in the ufc how do you turn it off and on like that well i think getting a call from the ufc kind of focuses your attention a bit. Um, I think that sort of put a whole new perspective on things. Uh, and, and obviously, I mean, this is it's a fantastic opportunity to be here. You know, this is a far bigger platform than anything I've done up to this point. And it's just something that, that I knew I needed to do. You're most known for your work as a flyweight, this fight taking place at 135 pounds. Did you have some hesitation taking this fight because she's obviously bigger than you and you don't usually fight at this weight? I mean, it's something we thought very carefully about going into this you know we I sat down with my coaches and sort of said is this, is this feasible you know, can, can we do this um, and we came to the conclusion that you know with a good strength and conditioning program a good nutrition program you know a, a good game plan going in you know strong background with my wrestling my grappling you know everything we decided that we could we could give it I could give a good account of myself here now, do you have to cut any weight for this fight? Yeah, I'm, I'm making a small cut. Yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty comfortable coming in. I'm just a little bit over at the moment and just drop nicely onto weight for tomorrow. So I think the advantage of that as well is because um, I've been able to sort of fuel my training properly. I've not been having to worry constantly about weight loss all through the camp. And I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be drained from making weight. So when I get into there on Saturday, I'll be able to really push the pace. 
you get the impression that a lot of people are looking past you? They talk about Alexis Davis as being one of those fighters that could challenge Ronda Rousey. Uh, the, you know, they're, they're, they're already talking about that, and she may be you know, even two fights away from Ronda. Do you get the impression, considering your size, considering what she has done thus far in, in North America here, that people don't really give you much of a shot? Yeah, I think I think I'm very much the underdog on paper, you know, I, and I'm re I'm really comfortable with that. I love being the underdog because it means I can go in there. And I've got everything to prove. You know, I I, I love I love that feeling, um, but I think if Alexis has seen, sees me as a stepping stone, you know, if she's if she's daydreaming about Ronda Rousey, she's going to get a wake up call on Saturday night. Um, I, I don't think I'm going to be a, a good stepping stone for anyone. How do you see the fight playing out? That's a good question. I think there's a few different ways, depending on how our styles match up. I think a lot of the time when you have two grapplers together, um, you often end up seeing a bad kickboxing match. And I'm quite keen for that not to happen. You know, I think I know what, what I'm good at, and I like to play to my strengths. Um, so my, my plan is that you're going to see a lot of grappling, um, and it's going to be interesting to see who comes out of that on top. You know, the rise of women's MMA in the UFC has been arguably the story of 2013 thus far. Do you feel any pressure to keep that going? Because all the fights thus far in the UFC have been great. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think one of the things is, because this is such a fantastic opportunity for women, because, again, all of us, it's, it's happened so quickly, and a lot of us never thought we'd, we'd get this shot. So I think there is that determination to really make the most of it once we get in there. Um, and I think that's, you know, that's, that's something that no doubt we're both feeling, you know, so I think this is, this is going to be a great fight. What's six times six? 36. Oh, you hesitated there for a second. <laughs> now. She's so smart. She's so smart. Smartest fighter in the UFC. She makes her UFC debut this Saturday against Alexis Davis. She is Rosie Sexton. Remember the name. Thank you so much. Great to meet you for the first time Thank and good you. luck on Saturday. Fantastic. It's, uh, it's good to meet you. Good to put a face to a name. <laughs>